Well, good morning, Vietnam, ladies and gentlemen. How's everyone doing today? We got the hey. one, the only, mine one on stream this week. Fantastic, happy belated birthday to this man. God. Hey, how up, you guys? doing, mine? How you doing, mine one? I'm doing fantastic, man. I'm super excited to be here. That's awesome. Well, we have your birthday stream to talk about, which was amazing, first of all. And second of all, yeah, dude, it was nuts. I started crying when you started crying. <laughs> <laughs> I Can we stop real quick and talk about your hair, Mufun? What did you do to that? Yeah, Please. I was going to I just noticed. What the fuck? I'm just going to ask what everyone's thinking. Like, what the I, fuck? Uh, I dyed my hair uh, this week. It matches your cup. I thought it, it was does. an intentional it accident. Actually. It does indeed match my cup, surprisingly. My my cup of mysterious liquid. Is this a weep thing? Um, no. <laughs> uh, no, he's so obsessed with Ninja, he decided to mimic his haircut, but instead oh. just went, like, super effeminate with it. Mifune, if you were a Smurf, what Smurf would you be? Smurfette. Smurfette, Smurfette probably. <laughs> if you start Smurfette. getting uh, marriage proposals from, from Japan, uh, just accept them. Now is yeah, that you know, is it soft or is it crusty? It's soft. It's <laughs> oh, very soft. Come back to. That's a weird question. Hey, like, oh goodness, it's I, Mike. I, I, I fucking log in, you know, just like okay, I'm finished, you know, done bashing a Fortazar, and then I hear, is it crusty or soft? Like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever seen the movie Along Came Polly? No. Oh, please no. don't. No. 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 <laughs> Okay. All right. So, so it's, yeah, our guest, our guest du jour, our guest of honor is uh, the one and the only uh, Battle Bard of the Imperium, Mind One, the DJ that keeps on giving. Thanks for having me on here, guys. Of so, course. first and foremost, Mind, you're a gamer. Yeah. Were you always a gamer or uh, did it grow up? Not on really. Uh, I mean, I always, like when I was younger, I played like Nintendo and normal kids games you know i'm old so we had nintendo and atari and stuff like that um i didn't really get into computer gaming until really kind of late in the game honestly i was more computer nerdy with like programming and stuff like that i never really did the game stuff clippy of course it is Daddy. of course it is what i want to start with Every time. Let me fix it. This I'm is not... always the case. The guys with the most expensive setups always have the most problems. It's honestly it's true. Awful. It's honestly true. I mean, he was fine 20 minutes ago, so it's probably Mifune's fault. Uh, the... It probably is. Uh, it's Definitely not my Mifune's fault. fault. It's coming so here... through on Discord that way. That's not my fault. There's the music. That's the problem. Can you hear me now? Is it better? A little. It's a little better. But we'll make it work. So, no, Sanchi. You cannot come in. We can't, anyway. we can't hear Mifune over his hair. <laughs> uh, you know what? <laughs> so, okay, so if you weren't a huge gamer before, kind of, um, do you want to break down how Goonswarm found you, or do you want us to kind of go off of our side first? Well, let's hear it from uh, mine one. Yeah, is my mic okay now? No, um, no, no, but no. it's it's we can hear you. It's just it's, yeah, that's possible. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We can make this work. Give me two seconds. Okay. Did you try turning it off and on again? Ooh. <laughs> oh yeah, we have. We also have other people on the show tonight, and some pretty damn good guests. This would be like a banner seven star week. Any other week, but this week it's like an eleven and a half star week. We've got uh, Mike Flood, we've got Cretton, we've got Klexos, we've got Alt Ferrari, we've got Caleb, we've got Slavbach. Thanks plus for saying my name right. Too. Yeah, plus the regular gaggle of friggin' idiots. And then we have three more that want to come in, but I'm hey, sorry, guys. I resemble right that now. remark. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, listen, guys that, that are that are queuing up to come in next week. Uh, yeah, but this week we're just a little too busy. Um, and not until a big deal. more leave. Yeah. Or until I ping boat. <laughs> no. <laughs> all all you know, I'm hearing is, is when are we hey, getting boat on stream? No, we got to no. hear have... We got to hear my dudes. Everyone's asking to hear my oh, dudes. Oh, yeah. Let's hear that while we wait for my one to work on his mic. 
my dudes. There it, it is, is Thursday. <laughs> it is Thursday. So, so, so here's the real question, though. When are we getting Boat Mark 1 to be with Boat Mark 2, a.k.a. Slob? Dude, right? Oh, wow. What's what was it? I, I, didn't I, don't think, I don't think the Seas of Eve could take it. I think he just got slopped in the face, Slob. Why? He's a bomber FC who also does a bunch of memes and corns. Okay. I mean, he's not wrong. Okay, okay, but but when I bomb blues, I only kill a few of them. Not the entire fleet. Like don't don't, don't like, ask Cash what happened Slav, the other day, though. Slav, do you have a dog? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, uh, we, I've never seen Boat and Kate or and Slavbok in the same room. Boat How do you feel him. about wrestling? How do you feel about redheads? <laughs> all right, all right. I'll, I'll, Let's bombard Slav with questions. <laughs> is, is Mine has to go in there, boss. At once. Did we do it? No. 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 But I just don't... continue. I think anyway, you'll be fine. You'll be we, fine. we can make it work. If if they can deal with me being in Alaska, we can deal with your mic being a little clippy. Yeah, your audio it's is good. usually shit there, Don. Shut up. Oof. It's uh, it's crazy because the computer literally just died before, like in the middle of the stream. <laughs> Before we got here, so well, you know, that's how it goes. So, um, so yeah, go ahead and uh, start off with kind of uh, what you were doing, maybe pre Goon Swarm, and then kind of go over the, how we found you, um, at least from your perspective, and how we got to where we are today. Yeah, so I mean, I started streaming almost seven years ago, and it was just for fun. I, I happened to see, um, I think Co-Carnage was streaming and I was like, ah, eh, that looks like fun and I can play video games and you know, I don't know. I, at the time I didn't really think about it as a career. It was just more like this gives me an excuse to play video games. Um, and then uh, I've been DJing since 90, 1996. I've played huge shows. I've played, I've, I've told the story before. I've, I've played, you know, festivals of 13,000 people. I've played weddings. I've played house parties, clubs everywhere. And, um, I was, I was like, Hey, I can do both of those together. I'll, I'll stream the club, uh, that I'm DJing at to Twitch and it'll be something really unique and maybe it'll take off. Right. So I did that for, I think almost a year and a half. And before you guys found me, I was actually at another club and we were a thousand, 1200 people every night, every time I would stream, but I would only have about 10 or 15 people in the stream. And so, as most of you guys who stream know, it, streaming takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. There's a lot of sacrifice involved. And so I've been doing it for, you know, five years with little to no growth. Um, maybe my max stream, I think, at that point in time was like maybe 20 people. And it had taken a toll on me emotionally and taken a toll on our family as well. Um, I'm married. I've got two kids. And so the weekend... I was at this club. There was 10 people in the club. There were probably three people in chat. And that was it. Uh, that was my breaking point. I, I was done. I was down on my, you know, down on my luck with the, with the DJing. The club wasn't going the way it was supposed to go. I was super upset about the stream because it wasn't going the way it was supposed to go. And then next thing you know, 300 and some weirdos show up in the chat. And they start posting this Z kill something and saying weird things about, you know, chips and stuff. And I'm like, what in the hell is this? I have no idea, but there's 300 people in here. So I'm going to give them a show. And, uh, they, they started buying drinks for people in the club. We, we came up with a name for uh, a couple of people in there. I think the first one was track pants. Uh, with some some lady wearing a, a pair. I remember. Uh, I remember doing that. Splits. And um, and then and then the night was over, and I was like, "Holy crap, that was awesome! That's insane!" And I didn't think that you guys would come back. I thought it was a one-off thing, you know, that you guys had your fun or whatever, and that was it. And I would stream throughout the week, so I didn't see anybody throughout the week either, right? So the Saturday comes, we go back to the club, and here comes the weirdos again. <laughs> and I say that. Um, and I think it was the third week that I finally thought, you know what? These guys, 
they keep showing up for me. So let me see what they're all about. And so I, I fired up Eve. I had tried it once before, but I had no idea. Uh, so I fired it up. I started looking at what they were doing, what you guys were doing. And um, I just, just kind of fell in love with it, with Eve and, and with you guys. Um, I think that it was the third week. I don't know if, can I tell the Debbie story too? You can tell whatever, yeah. as long as it's not going to break any rules. Yeah. Then Man, go ahead. whatever. Some people have heard this. Some people haven't. Uh, so the third week you guys were there, um, we had gotten into this routine of like buying people drinks at the club and shouting them out and, and, you know, giving them names. And Debbie happened to show up. Um, Debbie, I don't know what her real name is. I never found it out. I didn't at this point. It was, you know, so the chat had dubbed her Debbie and they kept buying her drinks and kept buying her drinks. And I, at the, it was been a couple hours in, I take my phone down with chat on it. And I'm like, this, there's 300 and some people watching you right now. Uh, and your name is now Debbie. I don't care what your real name is. It's Debbie now. And she's like, but I don't get it. So <clears throat> I bought her a drink from the chat. And then she says, this is so crazy. I've never been to a bar before. I, <laughs> I'm a nurse. I, you know, and I, I've, this is not something I do ever. This is the first time I've ever been to a bar. Oh, well, Debbie, at the Got end of the night, face. I cut the stream. Say, say good night to everybody. Everybody, you know, the stream's over. Debbie comes, uh, gets carried out by her friends, two of her guy friends that she came with. Her feet weren't moving. They were dragging on the floor. Her head was just like, I mean, she was out. Toilet paper hanging out of her pants. I'm pretty sure Debbie's dead. I think you guys killed Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So that's so that's that. And uh and because of the because of the the swarm of of the goons, um that that one the first night that you guys showed up, it it literally changed my life. I mean, I I started actually believing that being a streamer was possible and uh and it's it's been an amazing ride ever since. Now every week you put together like one hell of a set. Like, what? Where do you get like your inspiration for that kind of that kind of work um, play that you do every week? Yeah, so um, it's funny because uh, most people think of DJs as the ones you see at festivals, right? Um, these people they play the same set every time they go out. Um, they practice it over and over again. They know what's coming up. Everyone else knows what's coming up. Uh, I have never done that ever. I think maybe in my entire career, I've done it one time and it was terrible. Uh, I always, always, always play, uh, off the top of my head. Everything is live. I'm, I'm just kind of feeling the mu the moment and the music. And, um, it's just years of years of experience, I guess. Uh, like I said, I've been doing it since 1996 and I've, I've learned to kind of read the crowd making the transition to Twitch was tough because there is no crowd. There's a chat, right? Um, so I, I try and tend to, or I tend to ask questions, uh, in chat to see how people are feeling the, the vibe and the music. And that's how I kind of float around and that kind of stuff. But yeah, it's all, it's, I've got like 16,000 songs and I just kind of go with the flow while we're, while we're going. If it's you played also, Disney re remixes, I'd be like, I'd totally be down every night. Oh, <laughs> Don, Don's a Disney princess, if you didn't know. Now it's it, it's yeah, it's quite it's quite obvious, mind that that you really enjoy what you do, and 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 it shows through in your work. Now, have you ever heard um, "Play Freebird" by a drunken uh, redneck at a club? That's so funny. It's, can... it's really funny that. You... As uh, <laughs> so... as someone who's been in both band and chorus in high school and play as someone who plays guitar and has studied music as a profession the amount of times that i have heard play freebird and play wonderwall and play boulevard of broken dreams it's like it's it's ridiculous it is quite ridiculous i'll bring my guitar like i'll go to a, a bar with my parents 
and I'll uh, I'll bring my guitar to play along on an open mic night, and the first thing you hear is, "Can you play Freebird? Can you play Wonderwall?" And it's like obviously yes, but I'm not gonna play any of that because they're just uh, they're crowd pleasers, and they're there for you know kind of filler. If you got nothing else to play, then you play Freebird and you play and you play the guitar solo from Wonderwall. Like that's just a thing. Yeah, I mean, that's just so my experience. The, the the drunken craziness at bars there i've i could we could this could be a whole show honestly <laughs> uh, it really could i've seen so many things and i and i say this often i really wish you guys were around for the club prior to the ones you guys saw um because we had nicknames galore for that place oh my god it's the amount of people that face planted just crap drunk also i've been i've i've i have i i recorded uh like four or five shootings live on the stream because there were shootings at the places i was djing at so that's always fun unbelievable <laughs> kind of like the blues oh, brothers when, when they play that country club right and they have to play in the chicken wire cage so would the yeah. cops have yeah. you like turn those over to them like hey dj we know you got that recording this time <laughs> the vibe? no it's yeah no it's uh no it's a lot of panic um uh it's it's really i mean it's kind of crazy to see Human behavior when that situation happens. Play Freebird. Okay, so funny story about that. Re a really hilarious story about that. This happened, I don't know, six, seven, eight months ago. Where it's Saturday night, and we're rocking along like we do. And some person comes into chat, and over and over again, all caps, play Freebird, no remix. Over and over and over. And it was just hilarious. And we gifted him a sub, of course, because that's what we do in my channel. We don't, I try not to ban people. Uh, we try and bring them into the family, you know, like show them that it's okay. You, we're, we'll give you a hug and then you'll get a sub and you'll be, you'll be cool. Um, and then the next weekend he came back and, and one of my mods actually found a Freebird remix. And now it's kind of part of the rotation. <laughs> he asked for Freebird, no remix. I played the Freebird remix. Everybody lost their shit. And that's that, that's the history yeah everybody's happy right and who who doesn't love a little skinner hey man it was good it was good stuff so you're actually you... pretty close to me too um i could actually we could uh you're like two hours from me i believe if you're oh, still yeah. in, in in uh where you're at at least yeah he's <laughs> gonna dox me it's cool i'm not i didn't dox but we were getting close. Really, I mean, really technically, close. it's already on an INN article, so it's already out. Congratulations, there, but... mine one. You have a new groupie. I mean, <laughs> it's better than mysterious pizza showing up at your door that you don't know who they came from. Let's not talk about that, all right? <laughs> uh, have, you, have you ever gotten, like, one of those random Twitch streams doxing situations where someone found out where you are and just, like, sent you something weird? Yeah, pineapple... Yeah. Pepper, really like to eat barbecue pizza. Yeah, pineapple, green pepper, barbecue pizza, and I got sick on stream. <laughs> <laughs> there was a. I can understand. It's, pineapple it's cool. doesn't go on pizza. No, it's pineapple nice. does go on. No, we're oh, not no, no, you're wrong. Uh, I mean, pineapple goes on pizza. Okay, okay, I was okay, a okay, chef, okay. and I will tell you now, pineapple does not go on a pizza. Dudes, dudes. absolutely. It's, Gordon Ramsay it's says not kill each other over pineapples. My yeah. one's right. Gordon Ramsay said pineapple does not go on pizza. I'm just going to address the, the, the elephant in the room. I know this might be a little bit biased, but I, am I the only one that really wants Mind One to actually do the party at the top of the world at FanFest 22? Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. Which you, what? Uh, they have a big party in FanFest every year, and they call it the party on the top yeah. of the world because Iceland's obviously so north. So yeah, right. that would be that. fun. I, I know I know that you are primarily the battle bot for the Imperium, and of course there's going to be a little bit of bias, but I'm pretty sure that you love all the Eve nerds, and I really, really hope that CCP would want to do this because that would be a party. Just for the fact that the way you was you were introduced to Eve Online and, of course, the Imperium, that whole That's... story would just make it a perfect night. And, of course, that... I've already booked all my stuff uh, your, your concern is ccp and then you're like oh mine one who's also in the middle of moving to a new house why don't you just go to iceland for like two weeks <laughs> <laughs> he said 2022 
Speaking of uh, speaking of you stuff, mind one, are you going to be at Vegas this year? Are you going to E Vegas or? No, I don't know. I I really really want to, but um, we we basically live in a sardine a sardine can right now. Um, and so it's with the dogs and leaving the kids here and stuff. I don't know if we're going to be able to make it. Plus, uh, with the house, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I want to, but I don't Trip know if we're going to be able to. Is it a nice Ever... sardine can? <laughs> No, it's terrible. <laughs> Do you, hey, I'm looking at buying a house. You guys could come down here and rent my house. It's a three bedroom, two bath with a two car garage and a large yard. Ah. Well, then I'd have to two and a half week hours to work every day. Hey, I no, have a compromise idea. I, I so, think I have a compromise. Uh, mind one, how about you hosting the actual remote party stuff from E Vegas then? That's so a I'm, good idea. I'm, I'm, because uh, one of the one of the fun things is that with uh, for those who don't know, with Imperium News Network this year, we are trying to get coverage of E Vegas uh, of the event of E Vegas. We are going to uh, pending if we can work some funky things out with Twitch. We are going to be trying to stream a lot of the big events like corp dinners. And uh, and the party at the circa and stuff like that, and we're gonna try and stream that uh, on INN during E Vegas, which should be fantastic. that will be an interesting thing since I know what happens at all those parties. Mm-hmm. Now, Mifune, and it is not as much fun as you think it is. Mifune, you're going to E E Vegas, right? I am so indeed. Are we gonna be <gasps> able to, to meet? Are yeah, we gonna be I able know. to call you Debbie too? Um, <laughs> Ooh. I mean, with that haircut, are you keeping that for Vegas? Where did you get um, the biosecurity's responder skin for your hair? Just curious. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looks chat. like. Wow. Wow. Um, so the thing is, is that ironically, for those who don't know, blue is actually a, ter- a terrible pigment for your hair. Um, blue does not last long with a single shower, with a single hot shower and shampoo. I could wash ninety percent of this out. Do us um, a favor. So and get it's on very. That. Yeah, if wow. you do it now, I'll, I'll, uh, I like it. So I like it. Don't to them, I like it. Roasting. Wow. Um, <laughs> but uh, so the thing is, is that whether or not this will last in Vegas, probably not. Um, it all depends on whether I decide to uh, reapply the dye midway through like in september or so if i reapply it then it will be fine i mean no. like mifune to me i feel like you're gonna take a shower and spray on, are you an axe body spray person too with that no. hair uh, of course he is no <laughs> <laughs> because well the funny thing is, is that my dad is actually allergic to old spice so like, I we can't axe use old <laughs> spice. Yeah. Um, we we can't use old spice. We can't use. There's axe. a bad joke there. Anyway, but anyway, um, the <laughs> thing you know. Long story short, for those who are wondering, uh, when you have colored hair, you actually take cold showers because it's the hot water that takes the pigment out of your hair. So you take cold showers, and when I go when I go to work tomorrow morning at four a.m., I'm gonna take an ice cold shower. That to, sounds like real quick. awful. I'm just when is E Vegas, ask- guys? Someone's asking in October chat. October twenty first through uh, uh, the twenty third. Yep. Yeah. That weekend. I'm just going to talk as an authority because I've done pretty much all the different colors. And of the course, whole point, you have. The po- whole point here is, Mifune, that you actually shower normally. And then when it gets very faded, then you change the color. That's the whole feature. No, but that damages your hair. You should not keep the. It grows out. Don't worry. Shave your head, dummy. Jesus. Okay, so you can get to try green and purple and blue. And then what I think I call carrot color because the red didn't take in blonde hair so i looked very silly you have to try all of them so let's get ba- i want to get back to mind one here <laughs> yes yeah, um so real quick uh so now that we've got the backstory of how you joined goon swarm and i know uh and honestly your story is very much what eve is about which is finding those people bringing them in with the community and growing with the community to where the game and the community are intertwined. You wouldn't play Eve without the community more than likely, but um, you bring so much I to us. I yeah, tried Eve before like five minutes and I was like, nope. Yeah. Yeah. It's the a game, shit solo game. It really is. But when you've got the friends who can help you get over that first hurdle, 
to really understanding how to play. And, you know, there's so many people that we hang out with that play a little bit, but they mostly are there just to hang out with the rest of us, which I just find fantastic. Um, let's get into how Saturday went. How did it, how did your birthday start? Cause there, there had to be a catalyst that got you to what happened. Um, and we'll, uh, and for those of you that don't know, uh, uh, mine one's birthday celebration on Saturday went from like a fun, normal birthday stream to insane. It was awesome. Of, over a course of eight hours. So much fun. So many awesome just, screenshots of Titans Lansing. Can I just ask a small technical yeah, question? You know. Is there a, is mind one, is there a way to actually watch that stream with the music on? Unfortunately, because Twitch is Twitch, uh, you would have to time it with the uh, Mixcloud mix, and that's about okay, so it. You, um, but... you can just try and sync that, those two. You can't <laughs> actually... Uh, Good luck, guys! One. Good. That's the way. I have to do that so that I don't get uh, DMCA'd and, get, and lose my channel. Yeah, so that's a, that's a lot of... Because a lot of the time, surprisingly... No, Mifini, he has I a get... question. He's got he's to answer okay. the question. Or okay, I asked him so, to explain how did the night how did the night start to where you ended up? Yeah, so um, I, it's definitely not anything that I ever expected ever, ever, ever. I don't even know. I still don't even understand it. Really, uh, it still blows my mind. I can't even. I still can't believe it's real. Like it's it. It was amazing. I'm gonna try not to freaking get all stupid. And uh, there's might be onion cutting ninjas in here, but I'm, I'm gonna try to ward them off. Um. There's uh it, what started it really was um there's a there's a gentleman that goes by the name Old Man Keith and, and um a few weeks ago he started coming in on Saturdays and he would tip a certain amount and he and he he explained that he understands that um the equipment that I use and uh all that stuff is very expensive <laughs> and and um so he just was helping support uh help support you know that cause so he showed up and and we had a good amount of people in there already um and he he said he was going to tip my age times 10 and i'm 41 so he did ah, nice and and then after that so we there's a thing in my channel where I'm sure you guys have seen it's the the king of the corner, and so you just kind of one up the last person and you get your name in the corner and you you earn the title of being the king of the corner. Well, uh, craziness ensued, and all of a sudden there were there was an amount of things being thrown at me that I didn't I just didn't even understand. Um, and then also uh, one of our community members, his name's Alien, I guess he's been planning since January, contacted a bunch of people and made this really, really awesome video, um, a happy birthday thing. And so all of that together kind of set off this huge wave of holy shit, what the hell is happening? So, um, so basically, as you said, it started off with one guy uh, giving a big donation, a relatively big donation or tip. And then the video and um, you were on fire because I, enjoy, as I said, I, I, I greatly enjoyed the show that night. But um, I know that a lot of us started uh, watching when Klexus came in and told us that like, things were happening. And at that time was when I think the first $1,500 tip went through. And that's when oh, we man. started watching and we were all like, wow, this is crazy. And then another guy was like Jenkins or something. So uh, the the funny thing was is that um I work weekends uh from my old job and my new job. I work I work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, that's my work week. Um and so I come home on Saturday night now and I tune in to your stream and last Saturday I, I, I tune in and right when I tuned in is when you got the four hundred and ten dollar donation. And I was like, yeah. you know what? I really should grab my wallet and just make it 420 for the absolute meme. But I hadn't. I, I don't get paid until Fridays, 
and I had to pay my car payment this week. And so I was like, I really can't do that as much as I want to. I couldn't. So I promised myself I'll do it another week. So don't be surprised. Like, one of the next two weeks, you're going to find like a 420 donation in there. <laughs> Dear Lord. I never, I never expect it. I, I mean, I, I never expect it. And, and I, it's hard for me to... Uh, the, you know, there's a long, it, there's a lot of history with me and I'm, I'm, as I'm getting older, I'm trying to get over my past and stuff. So it's when stuff like this happens to me, it's just, it's not, I kind of suffer from the uh, impossible syndrome, if you will. Um, I just, I never feel like I deserve what's being given to me. Um, and so when this happened, it was, it's just mind blowing. It's just mind blowing. But you give so much back, mine, and we really appreciate that. Every every Saturday, uh, for Saturday Night Swarm, it's it's always a blast. And uh, thank you, thank you so very much for that. Well, you I have been it, such I, an instrumental part of us this for this past thirteen months. Like we, have, I know that I don't. I don't personally always listen on Saturdays. Um, I catch them every now and then, but I'm, we're usually doing a bunch of stuff, so I don't always hear them, but I know that it is huge for Karma Fleet to hear you and to see the shows and, um, read the stories and all of the media, especially you included, have allowed us to make it through this war with high spirits. And we were all prepared that no matter what happened, we knew we could count on you being there on Saturday to have fun, even if we ended up in low sec and rifters. And <laughs> so I think that's a huge part of why everybody just decided to show their appreciation yeah. on, to you. Now, yep. go ahead. Now, when, when, when mine one is, is driving to the store to get a burrito, what, what do you listen to? What, what kind of music do you like to, uh, to blow and play? I mean, for, for burrito grabbing, I'd probably just be listening to like electronic house music um i usually listen to bpm to try and listen to what's new and what's you know popular on on sirius it gives me ideas for new songs um i and this is it's kind of funny because where i'm from uh if you like or promote more than one genre of music you get called a sellout and so i've always dj'd everything except country uh because everything Except country is is good and it's great. Whoa, whoa, and it's whoa, fun. whoa, whoa. You know, Mine. we're gonna we're gonna throw no. hands here, man. No, I am not a country, country person either, but there is some good <laughs> gems in there. Yeah, I, I, love, I now love you, Mind One. Thank you very much. You are. Yeah, let, let me explain country, old country, drunk country. George Jones, Hank Williams is good country. New country <laughs> is shit. Oh my god. No, so the you is, know is nothing like, before nineteen after 1982. People, I don't want to hear anything from you. People like Dolly Parton. <laughs> people like Dolly Parton is like something that i will listen to very uh, i would listen to that in the car even though i i don't because i'm you know i'm your early 2000s pop punk kid plus of, you still uh, got a great set of tits <laughs> mind we live in north carolina mafoon so it's kind of expected see when my when my playlist is full of uh all-time low blink 182 type shit like that's thing you know i don't listen to country that much but like Something like Bruce Springsteen, maybe occasionally, but so, something like um, Darius Rucker or something, I'll be like, yeah, whatever. Like, Mind one, you have to you have to actually make a, a, a Western country Western style set for them now. A remix. So, <laughs> so, so only only that. only country and cowpunk for an entire you play, hour. You got to play both kinds of music, country and Western. That's hilarious. Okay, here's here's a defining question for mine. One, this will this will tell a lot about a person's character. Beatles or the Stones? Oh man, what? Uh, <laughs> you have to pick it's only the, one. It's the to Beatles. To the... No, 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 the Beatles. 100%. No, this is mine. One's question, not yours. I don't. I don't know, man. I mean, see, I can't answer that. I can't answer just one on that. It's that just is not the correct answer. Black is not the way I roll. The correct answer. So, sorry. <laughs> Sabbath is uh, yeah, some yeah, pretty interesting stuff. Move. That's it. Yeah. Who was your favorite Beatle? I don't have a favorite Beatle. Because that also I like says the a lot. song, though. Yeah, 
<laughs> I think mine's kind of more of a Ringo kind of guy. <laughs> You're a Ringo kind of guy. When did you get here, Ryak? How you doing, buddy? He slipped in because he normally behaves and is quiet when other people are talking. So, and we will have oh. a Ryak Appreciation Station at some oh, point. Oh, it's it's fine. You know what? No, no, we're not doing the Ryak Appreciation Station today. We're doing the Mind One Appreciation Station today. And, um, dude, like, so, like, I appreciate that every single time I ask you to play a song, you do play the song, and I'm not gonna lie i started crying when you played my song on last saturday because it was like super coincided with kind of i think it was kind of like how you were feeling and how everyone else was feeling and in case you need to know what the song is it's happiness amplified by uh above and beyond it's like one of my favorite oh, yeah. songs ever that's such a good track too and it was like that started playing and then people started just dropping bombs on your stream. And I just like, I was getting goosebumps. I started crying and like, I could see that like all the emotion in your, your eyes, like, you know, so it was just, it was crazy. And you know, I appreciate you. We all appreciate you, dude. And it's really funny because I was talking to Avon and I was like, Hey Avon, it would be really cool if you gave mind one and Nix on, uh, on his stream. And he was just like, okay, I can do that. So then I started spamming in Elysium. Hey, what's Mind One's character's name? People got back to me. And I'm like, all right, in about uh, 10 seconds, start spamming his stream with check your in-game contracts. And then <laughs> you were like, oh, okay, let's go do that. Oh, look, a Nyx. Yeah, well, it right. also helped that like you saying that, right? Because I've had a lot of interactions with Mind One. He knows me on the stream as Timerian because it's probably the name he sees all the fucking time. But yeah. What is your favorite ship in Eve? Uh, mind? Oh God, do I have to? Right. Well, really? I don't. What, what What do you like to fly the most? What do you fly the most? This is Megatron, isn't I, it? Yeah, the, the Megatron is my favorite ship in the whole game. I it, I think it's the the best looking ship. Uh, it just it's such a boss ship. What I love flying right now is uh, I love flying the Wolf. It's so much fun. It's agile. I've gotten the most kills. I think I've learned how to fly the best flying a wolf but megatrons are just the sexiest ship in the game so i have a, I have a, D, I have a dj question which goon slash imperium song is your absolute favorite and which one is best to actually remix um i let's see that's a that's a good one actually i do have the, the i don't hate you i think that seriously made was my favorite to remix uh, because it was the first kind of um, rock style song that he had given me to do. Uh, all the other ones were kind of like light, but this one was pretty heavy. You yeah, are, the Rise Against remix, right? Yeah. You haven't remixed the song that me and Sothrasil made yet, have you? The the Smells Like Goon Spirit. No. You haven't done that one yet. No, I didn't touch that one. Um, not yet. And he never will. You probably won't. I don't expect them to because Nirvana is is perfect in the way they are, and they don't need to be remixed. Nirvana would have been a, a good band if it wasn't for Kurt Cobain screwing everything up. Hey, hey, <laughs> Kurt Cobain was fine. No, he wasn't. He he was fine until the end, but uh, he was, uh, 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 yeah. can we just not go there? Let's just avoid that <laughs> topic, please. Not a good front man, really. Anyway. Seriously. S second part well, that of the was, question, that was my favorite one to remix. I think the, the my favorite song uh, that I think got the best response that I've made yet is the Containment Breach song, which I loved. I like I, I called it when Pappy first started that whole narrative. I went into the Ask EFC channel and I said, "Look, this is like I I, I DM'd Cryo, I think it was, and I was like, look." We need to do, like, a whole slew of propaganda thing of, like, SCP containment breach type shit. And then not even two days later, you come out with that remix. And I'm like, yes. Absolutely yes. He fucking did it. Yeah, that was... It was, uh... <laughs> it was super fun to make. Um, it's in a, it's in a new kind of style of house, which is called Rave House, uh, which is a super dope genre right now. And uh, yeah, I I could it, it got a really good response, which also makes it 
fun when you get that kind of response for something you've made, you know? Um, but I thought it was kind of spot on and I love it. I, this is what I want. At the end of the day, I want people to uh, fear me the way they fear Mr. V while they're talking, like with the thought that if they say something, it will most likely be turned into a song. <laughs> <laughs> Have you actually been around uh, the entire repertoire of uh, Eve songs like Sindel Pelly and stuff and all those other things, older stuff, or do you still have things that you've missed? Well, there's definitely some songs that I haven't uh, gotten, like, been able to, to listen to. Um, I've remixed a couple of old, uh, what was the Hurricanes? I remixed that one, um, which is a pretty good song. And then uh, How to Stay Aligned, I, re I made a remix of that. Cause I know, cause what would happen is during the night on Saturday, someone would request it. And for me, uh, to make it kind of fit in the set, I need to up the tempo a little bit and add a little bit of, you know, spice to it. So, um, that's why I did those. And I, I, ha I do plan on doing more. Now out, out of the remixes, who's what enemy's voice that you had to listen to over and over and over again to do the remix really annoyed you the most. We're gonna pass. Oh, I can't say it. I can't say it. <laughs> I can't say it. No, it's okay. Just the, fact, the fact that I can't say it should be a clue on who it is. I'll just say it like this. It's not Villy, it's not PGL, it's not Redline. <laughs> and just think of who the other people are that I put in my songs. Redline's actually a friend of the show and uh, I I like his voice. Like if Redline. he's listening right now, cheers, Redline. This is for you, buddy. I think that means love. I don't think it means anything else anymore. I'm not trying to be satanic. So um, the answer no, is yep. Vince Draken. No, no, no it's, it's Gobbins. It's... <laughs> no, no, Elf it's boy. Draken. Call him what his no, name no, is. No. Elf boy. Well, okay, I'll, I'll, fine, I'll say it. The, I, don't, I didn't mind any of the other ones, Villies. I, I, we did Dunk. Um, uh, we, there's some PGL in there. Uh, there's Gobbins. Because I get to laugh, because what they're saying is, 100 percent false it's just absolutely not true and so i get to spin it and cut it up and make them sound even more silly than what they do saying it the the, the first way <laughs> and so I, I laugh about it the one the, the one that uh that really irks me and it irks me more now because of what i know um is ron i i Ron voice on, on his song that irks me. I understand. That's fair. So, as far as the DJing, what influences as far as as far as DJs like who, who do you like? Um, I I don't know much about much about the genre, but I know like we got the up here in in Canada, we got that uh, a dead mouse guy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> the dead mouse guy. He came into my stream one night. <laughs> Did oh, really? No, yeah. Yeah, it was on a Wednesday night. He came in uh, actually kind of talking smack. Um, huh. He said, uh, I think his first sentence was something along the lines of, how, how hard is it actually to stand behind turntables and mix other people's songs? Wow. <laughs> Did you mix one of his songs or something? Hey, I would have. Yeah, uh, Did you know he, that, that uh, Dead Mouse has his own Fortnite? Or no, sorry, PUBG team. Yeah, he does. And ironically, he, um, whatchamacallit, he, uh, there was a video I watched on him a couple months ago, actually, surprisingly, where, uh, it was talking about, like, his new DJ set or something like that. And it was, like, a whole weird cube type system yeah, weird dope. thing and his cube is like dope and all and I, i'm not really one for like the edm genre or anything like that but like i think the one guy that i've actually listened to is um akon i think his name is i can't remember his full name but he did a couple of remixes of blink 182 songs and that's how i found him out i know it started with an a but that's how you know like that's that's as far him, him plus mind one no, no, it was like AK something. I can't remember the name. I'm not going to look it up because I'm too lazy. But like between him and Mind One, that's like the only kind of like house EDM I ever really listened to. But I like, thought you just listened to Kids Bop all day long. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, EDM is pretty much the only genre that I listen to on a daily basis nowadays. 
I'm going to sit in my corner with my country music. Listen, I <laughs> sit here and sing Disney songs most evenings, mixed with Evanescence and um, cello oh, versions of... Um, I love listening to cello versions. Of, no, well, I've listened to that one, but I really love listening to Lincoln Park songs with it as a cello because they do it slow mm-hmm. and somber, and it's so pretty. Um, and then I like the two cello players, and I lot with a bunch of their stuff. So, did you I'm play the eclectic. cello, Don? Yes, I did. The so uh, I can play the cello as someone who plays the piano and the guitar. Um, and and it is slightly decent at the violin, although I never owned my own personal one. I, I know how to roughly play the violin. One of my favorite um, emo artists, his name is Ronnie Radke. Uh, his name is Ronnie Radke. He's the lead singer for Escape the Fate and for no, Falling in Reverse. Falling in Reverse now, but he used to be the lead singer of Escape the Fate, right? Um, he recently released two piano ballads of uh, uh, of falling in reverse songs. And as someone who has studied voice and someone who has studied the piano, they're absolutely fucking beautiful. They're like, I'm kind of obsessed with the two songs right now. I don't know. They're great. That sounds really snobbish, Mifune. As someone oh, that has studied I, voice studied and studied voice. the piano. I love acapella. As somebody that smoked a lot of weed and listened to a lot of fucking rock and roll, man, I can <laughs> almost guarantee that it's shit. <laughs> Anyways, so I don't, I don't, I don't correct, think it needs right. to be said, you know, that I used to be a counter tenor, you know. But oh, uh, look, counter tenors so, are the most fucking. They are the most entitled I'm, no, I'm, bastards I'm, on the I'm planet. I'm not even kidding. When I was uh, like a freshman in high school, I sang counter tenor, and then my voice dropped, and it was like, okay, you're not now. You're a bass three. Okay, cool. You're like, go get your guitar, Mafune. No, uh, I have it right. God, here. please don't. No, 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 I'm not gonna no, get it now. No. Okay, so anyway. I do want to ask before it gives me uh, my one that he might have to leave around nine ish or so. So. Um, I do want to ask mine one. In Eve, what do you normally play as? Do you normally play as regular DPS? Do you um, jump in as the cute little EC- Ewar frigate? Are you like hardcore Lodgy? What do you, what does mine one like to do? Uh, I mean, I <laughs> so my initial I just my initial plan was to be the, like a legitimate space bard. Which is, you know, be a support character, fly logy, and that kind of stuff. Um, but I kind of like just, I'm, and people who have done the gate camp with me and when we were in M2 and stuff, I kind of like just throwing ships into the middle of the shit and seeing how long I can last. I mean, See? one of the things we do on Wednesdays and Saturday nights for fun is I, I've got a scorpion fit that I just launch into T5Z and try and make it back to the gate. And that's it. And it's, it's fun. That's are so you, I, I like it. Are you sad have... that that's changing soon? Uh, I mean, there's always going to be something for me to whelp with, you know, somewhere, somehow. He's a metalhead yeah. at heart. He loves the mosh pit. So oh, I have to ask yeah. now, who is your favorite yeah. FC? Ooh, that's a good question. So, I've only ever gone on a few fleets. Um, and there's one person, and this the reason for this is... Uh, I like F Sync um, because he was my first fleet that I ever went on, and it was it was crazy. So I log into the game uh, after you know the whole shenanigans with the bar stuff, and I get overwhelmed with "You're coming to Delve right now." I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> I think I'm a Drifter or something. I don't know. I have no idea what this game's about. So I get escorted from from wherever I was in high sec. And I, at this time, I didn't even know what high sec meant. Like, I have no idea what's going on in this game. All I know is that it looks cool, and there's a bunch of people yelling at me, telling me that I'm going to Delve. So I get a personal escort down to Delve. Uh, we land on um, the McMahon Fist, I think. No, no, no. What was it back then? It's not the McMahon Fist. What was the main it was a, a, star? It was a name that we could not actually say on Twitch. <laughs> was that a star? <laughs> the second part of that. No, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not gonna say it, but can't, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say it's a theta star of dick butt. Yeah, that was totally its name right, forever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We're in there. Yeah. A pilot by the name of Mill Pucky lets me blow up a very expensive ship right off the Keepstar, which was super fun. Uh, and then F Sync was like, "Hey, let's go, let's go next door and shoot." I think it was Brave at the time, 
And so we jumped in some ships. People, you know, gave me a bunch of ISK. And again, at this point in time, I had no idea what was going on. And F-Sync fired up a fleet. We jumped in a bunch of small ships and we went over and uh, I think we were in Fountain at the time and we had a little whelp brawl with, with Brave and it was, it was freaking awesome. Well, we're looking forward to a, a lot more of that. And uh, I don't know we're, if you've been seeing what's been going on, but holy shit, are we burning stuff? We're going to need you for the next coming months minimum. So oh, yeah. Um, make sure to be available for the inspiration and the true battle bard. Can we talk about, I think this, this is a good segue into yes. um, how we have already reclaimed. Uh, it took us, what, a week? What took Pappy a month? <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm like 13 uh, months to do what we've done in the last look, week. Look, we have like 72 oh, hours? You mean we've three only, days? Not even We've a week. only gotten one region, and the other regions are just starting to, you know, flare up, right? Uh, 20, is it up to 29? Look, 29 iHubs have I, been... My grandfather's in town, so I, I've been hanging with him the past, like, 30 hours or so. So, like, that thing jumped from 15 iHubs to 29 real fucking quick. By the way, on that note, Mind One, do you think you can do a beach party when Initiative is back in Fountain? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that that's the... And not to segue, but the, or try to get off track here, but that that's the cool thing is... Like, I'm always down. I've taken days off work for this. Like, if something's about to go down, I'll take a day off work so I can be there to uh, make sure the tie-dye doesn't suck oh. and uh, rally groups and make sure, you know. And, 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 and again, I, I, it, was, it was mostly because I enjoyed doing it for, for you guys, uh, and I didn't know how much impact it really had. This is, I uh, think it had a pretty good impact. I mean, the what we were talking about with this war is – they tried to fight us with we were strongest, which was like a they wanted to have a moral victory as well as a military one. And you're part of the thing that helps keep our morale up and keeps us going. I think you're a big part of that, just like seriously is a big part of that. And all the other propaganda and memeing we see helps say, like, we're not dead. We're here having fun. We're doing shit. Let's keep yeah. going. Where when yeah. is the uh when is the mind one mix coming of tests uh defeat announcement? Where they have, where they open up, where they open up the comms to the members, to the line members, and the one goes, "This is a shit show." Like, when is that mind mix coming? Because it needs to come so now. I need, I need the audio clip still. Um, as soon as, and that's it. As soon as someone gets them to me, but yeah, there's, there's so many. There's the guys, guys mix that we got to make. Guys, 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 guys. Is it gonna be the shots? So shots, shots, shots. Guys, 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 guys. guys. That's uh, uh, oh my god so uh we'll kind of break down and then as i said my one if you have to leave just let us know you can pop out but this will be open up for the whole floor um so we saw on we're gonna do a little re recap so saturday they do all their announcements of we're gonna do a big or actually two saturdays ago now um we're gonna do a big push final push gonna be done in four weeks Unless we make a lot of progress. And we were all like, okay, we just have to hold on. We were very excited. We were like, we can do this. We can do this, right? And then nothing happened other than Frat losing like 300 billion to snuffed out uh, on their way trying to move down, which was hilarious. So then uh, the changes happened last Tuesday of the TTT, apparently out of left field. Apparently nobody knew this was coming. And all the tax changes, which are only for three months, but you never know with CCP, they could forget to change it. Um, all of a sudden, we started seeing things change. You know, there were no fleets going out. There was no rumblings. Uh, you know, we're at Villy on the Saturday before, uh, or la this last Saturday, saying, don't expect anything to happen today, but you never know. But we all know nothing was going to happen. Um and then they attacked on Monday. Big attack. Right into 1DQ. It looked suicidal. It looked dumb. But it was fun. And people were streaming it. And, you know, I'm sitting at work watching. And then all of a sudden, pictures start coming in of, why is YTAC 2 unanchoring? Why is 39P unanchoring? Why is Y5C? And so on and so on. And it start. <laughs> it wasn't until the middle of this fight that we started seeing that they were leaving. 
Now, and it just snowballed from there. I would, I would like to point out after the first Keep Star started to unanchor and it became public that it unanchored, Lady Scarlet pinged NC Dot saying they were leaving, and then uh, long after, um, I think it was Tuesday morning, we all found out that um, NC Dot, Pandemic Horde, even Dunk Dinkle didn't know that the unanchorings were going to um were going to happen during that fight they were told that those that those unanchorings would start after the fight was over you know that the unanchorings would start wednesday or friday but no they started like pro god and villy started unanchoring those things during the fight and nc dot and panfam was like Oh my god, well I guess the cat's out of the bag now, so now we have to make our announcements early, even though we weren't planning to until you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And that so, that was the weird that was the weird part to me, and that I think we talked about it on Tuesday on Trash Talk Tuesday, the disconnect in leadership between the Pappy Alliances. Yeah, who wants to jump in on that? Anyone got I have plenty of comments, but obviously we have guests, so uh any comments on kind of the fallout that happened ever since those things started on anchoring. Yeah, I'll, I'll start. Um, first of all, um, can we get a wee woo? Wee. Mm -hmm. All right. No, that's all I had. Wee okay. woo. <laughs> the the Patrick on, on star fleet, wee woo. Yeah. If you're on that fleet, you know. Are you thinking about the cod house thing in general, Don? I think, no, I... I think it was desperation, to be honest. They knew they mm -hmm. were going to leave. So they started on anchoring first because they thought they'd have likely higher likelihood of getting them out, right? They I'm start before sure. everyone else. I'm pretty sure that was like a big mistake or the first mistake, right? The premature on anchoring. I think mm -hmm. someone forgot to keep the rest of the groups in form. I, I don't know what they were thinking. <laughs> all I, all I, I don't understand. From, from a line member's point of view, like... What I don't know when it when we started getting on is because we were streaming it live, and I thought that the fight that was happening in one DQ was it. Like I thought they were gonna, this was the first wave and wave after wave was gonna continue. And holy crap, this is gonna be awesome, and I might have to take the next day off work. <laughs> um, wow. And then all of a sudden, people started yeah, people that. started posting screenshots and stuff uh, in the in the chat of you know the unanchoring keep stars um and man i i don't know i think i think the leadership were just trying to save their own ass uh and didn't didn't really care about the line members and i i want to give a huge shout out to all the line members who chucked ships into 1dq and who consistently fought us and you know those guys are awesome the the pappy leadership can you know, they can go do some not nice things. Like we can eat our ass. I think a lot Hell of yeah. I think a lot of what happened Monday hinged on the fact that they um they had to, right? Cause like this entire war we've made this we've made the statement on Theta Thursday, they've said it on the meta show. Villy like throughout this war, Villy and Pro God couldn't pull out, right? They can't just admit defeat. Right, it would because that would destroy not only the morale of their line members, but that would just destroy them overall. You know, you can't you can't say that we're gonna invade one DQ and then not invade one DQ because that would just create a whole nother shitstorm. So, I I see that that half-assed push in one DQ was kind of like a crowd pleaser. It was a kind of oh my god, we promised you guys this, so now we have to do it. <coughs> Bless seriously, you. Oh. seriously, that was the equivalent of just doing small blinds when you've just called all in. It's like I have not been as disappointed in my entire Eve history, which is pretty much since day one, than I was about that night. Because what they said made me think, oh my god, we're gonna see that butcher's bill. We're gonna see a yeah. thousand titans dead. And it was a no-show. 
it is if I was a Pepe line member, I would be raging about that because if I really thought that this is oh. it, we're going to have the big fight and then get this level of disappointment, it's like I would never listen to these types of leadership personalities well, ever so, again. It to is, be fair, it's pathetic. Goblin so, did say to expect a disappointment. So that's true. He did promise. He gave exactly what he promised. I'll try. Well, I I frequent trash talk Tuesday, obviously. And I asked Billy outright if invading if the invasion was so the TTT changes. I asked him, is that change the final push? And he's I'm not going to I can't do verbatim, but he said it absolutely has. It already has. So kind of like the writing on the wall there. And this is before the changes were actually officially put in. And then they followed it up with we're pulling out. So it was like, I, I guess you can kind of see it from a mile away when he said that. And then he got on Trash Talk Tuesday and ate shit to Mitani all time on Tuesday. It was a great. Which everyone should watch at yeah. their own pace. Mm-hmm. Um, so the so what happened? Go ahead. Well, the funny part about that is, that, I mean, we weren't going to fall because of the TTT scheme that they had put in place, I don't think. I mean, if they thought that, that the entire war hinged on that move, and then all of a sudden now they can claim that because of the changes, that's why they lost. I mean, that's pretty delusional. No, it's um, it's very, and I and I think Mitten said this. the the very the very um fun aspect of this war that I will say is that pretty much almost everything that Mittens and Brisk have said in the meta shows and in the firesides all came out to be true right and the thing was from the beginning of this war no matter no matter who won no matter who lost both sides will say that they won right so right. the thing was is that test and and th- this is the big thing this is the no bullshit you know facts on the table is that at the beginning of this war Vili and pro god said that their goal was to destroy 1dq and that their goal was to make Matani quit EVE Online, and that their goal was to make the Imperium disband. They, they, we have the facts that they said that. They said that to Polygon. They said that on their first town hall of the war, and even Gobbins agreed with them during the Pandemic Horde town hall at the beginning of the war, right? And then they changed that narrative to say, hey guys, you know, we, uh, the whole point of this was to make goons a little poorer than they used to be and to destroy their keep stars and the, you know, and it's like, that's bullshit, right? Exactly. The guys, guys, guys thing, because here's the fact I can tell you from experience that 99% of the keep stars that, that they destroyed in Delve were crab stars. They were keep stars that were created by corporations and some of them created by multiple corporations that were built out of fun and they were dropped and donated to the alliance uh-huh right and actually and i have can, okay. well, let mine run yeah yeah, no, yeah it's fine it's fine but, but also like we have to i i hate that people call people and spin so we have to also make note that there was statements said that we will make you bleed for every keepstar we'll fight over every keepstar and we didn't do that and so you know I, again with the facts they lost we won that's all there is to it but they didn't give us things said on our side that that we didn't adhere to both sides said things that you know didn't hold up at the end of the war well they didn't give us an opportunity they decided to go the pussy route and jam everything and and make and being able to outnumber us the way they did, there's no yeah. chance of us going in and di- having the Titan fights that we could have and have absolutely massacred them with. Like the first M2, we traded pretty evenly. Second one was yeah. just a dumb decision on their part. Yeah, but oh, yeah, I think sure. I think M2 just gave them like it instilled a level of fear in them as to where they they decided as a group they they wanted to make every keep star as uncontestable as possible, which is what mm. they did. Well, the fact is that we can't speak for them. We don't know what what they did or what they are doing, but we do know what we did and what we are doing. And, you know, we can touch oh. on that a little bit. Uh, we know what we're fucking doing shit. 
So um, they, they, let's... they wanted they wanted a restaurant uh, dinner for the price of a glass of water, and that's pretty much been their problem from day one. They wanted to try and actually win this war on the cheap, and that's just that's just not how it works, especially when you know what assets the actual Imperium had amassed. It's like the fact that they even kept trying this cheap way of doing it, and and it, and people keep mentioning M two. It's like okay, M two was kind of bloody but we were t- talking about in the realm of 1200 1500 titans on each side before this stuff even began so i don't understand why they thought that they weren't going to lose that that's like that's like the minimum loss right exactly now i want to get into um uh we'll go with klexos first if he's still here uh what have you what started immediately after their announcement like what was goons like first priority on taking care of because you were an fc on a lot of this right yeah and quite a bit of it and if i wasn't directly backseating i was kind of supporting from the back end a little bit just helping out where it needs to be helped right um from the time of their announcement kind of just went immediately stuff just seemed to like started getting ref fleet just started going out like crazy everybody was just kind of in disbelief of what just happened and just very frantic scattering and burning of everything out of Dell's. Frantic and whatnot from the enemy side because they're they're not even contesting ninety percent of the stuff we're going after. I gotta say that right now, like it's absolute chaos watching them. And the interesting part, and this is what I wanted, kind of wanted somebody to get to, but no one did, is all of the the leaks have been coming out from Pabby Snowden, from Trash Talk Tuesday, uh, just from Reddit things in general of. Um, how much they hated or did not enjoy working with each other. You find out that this person refused to work with this person. So therefore, instead of like just telling that one person to shut the fuck up, they went ahead and just decided to do, you know, the war by council, which ended up probably costing them part of the war. uh, And finding out that they had no plan most days they had no coordination of like we need to do these fleets i know we have this time zone this time zone, this time zone but nobody everyone was so burnt out from eating the cake of 45 keep stars well, that not a single fucking person made a plan not a, to like get in there and do it so to no, it. That, not not no, only let, did they hold on not only did they not have any coordination near the end um, according to the Pampy leaks, and especially the leaks that were brought to us on Trash Talk Tuesday, we see that all throughout the war, it was a very time zone by time zone basis. Like, I'm not sure for anyone who's not Goon Swarm, and for anyone that's not an a- a- NFC, right? Um, we kind of make have, it fast. I, I I wouldn't say 24 seven, but we basically have 24 seven coverage of our fc team right like when dave archer when he go before he goes to bed he waits for the next time zone guy to get online and then explains to him here's what we did during my time zone here's what needs to get done during your time zone right like that's what we do and in pappy there was none of that so you would have an eu time zone pappy fc go ref something and then he wouldn't even tell the AUTZ team what they needed to do. And so Altari, the how well would that go? How well but would that we go? But we Not saw this ex- having any plan 12 hours ahead. Um, so typically, like with us, we have, as they were saying, pretty solid coverage across the board. There's some blank time zones where we're like, uh, what the fuck? But those time zones get rapidly pretty covered. Um, for not having a plan 12 hours ahead, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. Not knowing what's going to happen 12 hours from now, like that's going along the metro. They don't. They can't predict what we're gonna do. If we can't predict what we're gonna do, and that just doesn't work. There's no cohesiveness, and they can't agree with each other. So when someone wants to form, they have to get. And I think it was Brother Bob that said this. They have to get six, seven, eight, nine FCs to agree to form. Like that, it just wouldn't work. And and didn't we see this quite early uh, in the war? I think I kind of mentioned it when I noticed the shenanigans with Killer B because he kind of came in and it looked like he was supposed to actually participate. And then after one of the first fights, uh, it looked like there was, was like, ah, internal bounce. discussions and he just moonwalked out. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that I said that this is a sign that if you, if you can't even get someone like Killer to participate in this, and he might not be the highest tier FC, but he's a really, really experienced FC. And he's 
especially experienced in the meta gaming. So the fact that he seemed to have like just called it quits is like okay, this is the first hint that this committee stuff it doesn't work. Now think, the go ahead. Well, I, just one one of the things that I think was stacked against them, and they did it to themselves, is one of the things that was said is the Imperium was the Imperium. We weren't a group of different coalitions put together, different alliances put together. We've been working to, and I'm very new, so I say we, but it's been working together for a very long time. And these, you know, the other side had to put together a bunch of people who had never worked together, who had backstabbed each other before. And, and that's something that we didn't have to contest with. Like in our group, we were all cohesive. We, we liked each other <laughs> and, and it was more than, um, you know, just, uh, uh, a goal that brought us together, I guess, is what the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, of course. I yeah, mean, just thinking about that, you know, the cohesiveness thing is a huge deal because as Altaria was saying with the FCs, you know, a lot of us, we would communicate with each other and be like, hey, we're not going to be around like this time, this time, on this day, this day. And then like people would cover you for each other, like, you know, you would for an actual job if somebody needed a day off kind of a thing. Yeah, yeah. And we were really good at talking. Like, we have a Discord. We bullshit in there a lot more than anything else, but we have a Discord where we just, Hey, I'm not going to be around tonight. Is anyone going to be around? And someone will step up and just cover the gap. Like we're I mean, there's at this point in the war, since we're switching tides, the war's still on. No, we didn't win. We're still happening, guys. Um, we won this this part. We won this part of the we war. The we have invasion. we have the offensive. We stopped the invasion. Um, we are so cohesive in knowing who's going to be where. We're always having coverage, pretty much twenty three seven. I mean, there was a long time, too, where, like, Altar, myself, and Crete, and we would, like, rotate who was going to be there for AATZ to make sure they had somebody around that could form, like, some of our bigger stuff. Yeah, because, I mean, if you guys don't know, listening, we have three tiers of FCs. We have skirmish commanders, tactical commanders, and ops FCs, and our doctrine choices are limited to what our title is, what, what rank we hold. So, me, Crete, and Kalexos were ops FCs. We can form hacks and battleships and stuff, so we'd rotate on who can be, who's going to be around. Yeah, because apparently with their lack of cohesion, um, at least one of you guys could hold them off from anything overly disastrous. And usually... You know, by the time we're in, in the shit and we are holding them off, we can... We're pinging. People will start metastasizing, whatever that word is, out of nowhere. People show up. Materializing. Materializing. Yeah. Yeah. Not metastasizing. <laughs> whatever the fucking word is. My, <laughs> we're not, not breathing. English is hard. Okay. All right, I'll be right no, but yeah, like even oh, Slug, for instance. Just wow. Oh my god. Something that happens a lot. Like when when import when when fights go on and go on and go on, people people will materialize to help you. Yeah, like it's crazy. Like as soon as a ping goes out, like by the time that fleet undocks, like, you know, the command team and the channel may have gone from two people, like the coordinator and the FC, to now you have a team of ten, fifteen people. And like yep. the course of time it takes to just get the fleet undocked. Mm -hmm. Just a just quick breaking news, and I don't know what to make of this, but I'm looking at my uh, I'm looking at my overlay, and I noticed that uh, one of our prominent, maybe twenty fourth best FC, is recording his fleet comms. Just just to add to this, I I feel like when I've watched the entirety of the war, that they had all the right parts to potentially win this war but they had all the people in the wrong positions because everything you've just said and, and we've talked about with the FCs and, and the Sky Marshal stuff and and even the, the strategists, it's like we know they have the people that could have done this. They just didn't seem to be sitting in the right seats. It's the same with the messaging, right? We know that if the messaging had been done by people like Vince, like people like Dunk or uh, even Elise Randolph because he was actually not a CCPA yet, the whole thing would have been different. It's like, but instead we ended up with these horrible, and again, okay, this is a little bit of an attack on Vili, but I feel like people like Vili has been doing non-truths, right? O almost blatant oh, he, lies. We and, talked and about it. And, 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 and stuff like, oh, but the Imperium doesn't have 1,200 to 1,500 Titans. Like, But you know that they do. Why do you keep lying to your own people? It's we like, talked about that of, after Tuesday. This kind of mis-messaging 
is exactly why they lost, because they put all the wrong people in the wrong positions, not because they didn't have the talent, not because they didn't have the wealth, not because they didn't have the manpower. They had everything in line to win this. But the fact that they were dependent on, on SRP, mostly from, from TTC money, which is like, but you have money. Why do you keep talking about this if, as if you can't actually find the money? You? If you no, want to win, the... you can find that Limiting. money. Yeah, but that, that builds off of it. It's because Pappy line members are going, mm. oh, CCP is against us. They nerfed the TTT. Like, no, people have to realize that in EVE, one of the biggest points of this game is that you can choose what kind of income you make i can choose if i want to go mine i can go mine if i want to rat i can go rat and it even goes all the way to the top the Indeed. alliance the alliance Indeed, can choose right. industry the alliance can choose day trading that you can choose how to make your income you know, yeah. not, that's, that's not really gotta, the case. It, in a big war, that's not how the funding and the budgeting works, Mifune. It's, it's, maybe it's a not. bigger level, right? But but the point is that the people involved in the war have the money. It's not that like these people can't actually man up and put some, some skin in the game. They could have funded these things. They should not have been dependent on only the income stream from SRP uh, on TTC money. Because as I've said since the beginning of this war, the majority of the actual coverage of SRP is handled by the TTC money, even for the Imperium, because the destruction numbers have been horrendously low. The only thing that makes these destruction numbers even make a bleep is the actual structures. Yeah, we could break this down till our fucking brains bleed, but we got a new segment. It's called News Straight from the Front Lines with Mike Flood. Mike, oh what the fuck's going on out there, bud? I see um, you. So we wrapped a bunch of structures. We wrapped a bunch of fucking eye hubs. Um, I shit on Zero Musky the other night. Fuck you. Um, let's see. <laughs> wait, um, wait. Thomas Wilk wealth in the day of Archer. Asher <laughs> fucking nuked a Serb fleet. There's been a lot going on. Sorry, he nuked a mutant fleet in a Serb fleet. Uh, Happy birthday, Mike. Yeah, Happy birthday, birthday, Mike. Mike. There was a Ooh. Titan kill somewhere in there, wasn't there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. How, so, who yeah, wants so, to go over the story of last night? I, okay, yeah. Who so, wants yeah. to wee-woo? So Jimmy Dumbfuck in a Ragnarok decided that he wanted to shoot a... No, no, no. You need to, you need to start the story at the beginning. Oh, are you talking about the adventure to 60? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, oh, we okay. also passed... Uh, Nobody knew where, where they were going. That's... We passed Villian alts in FAT and Charon, so I had a little bit ahead okay. of time. So, yeah. Nice. Kill the R is... Asher took a third fleet to go ref a keep star. Um, they went over there, ended up nuking a Munin fleet led by Shard at the bed. Um... On their way back, a Ragnarok decided to take a hot shot at a Scepter, and then a Hector appeared 30 seconds later and tackled him on this uh, AQT Keepstar as he was getting bumped off. Then, courtesy of Reddit this morning, after he died, we get to see the fact of uh, Sashi Renukin, the guy who lost his levy when the Revenant got dropped, bitching about him not getting SRP for his Falcon that he totally, you know, was going to drop backs with. They did oh. drop faxes. Oh, they did? They okay. did drop I, I, yeah, they I missed just, that part. They just, they just almost yeah. died, too. Yeah, they just weren't useful. Because they, they only got like two or three in before the Sino died, so they could only get maybe five in. Yeah, so it, it, the even better part is, is Sashi is the same guy who is like, you know, he's shitting on this Requiem Eternal dude for losing his Titan on a Keepstar. Sashi lost his on a fucking <laughs> Keepstar. A Levy on a Keepstar. It's a freaking 25 dreads. <laughs> All right, I gotta before you guys get too far, I gotta get out of here. Um, I got. Can I say two things real quick? Yeah. Certainly, sir. Okay. Uh, the first thing is I have to I have to mention that apparently we're auctioning off uh, Tony's uh, corpse <laughs> in Jita, and all the profits are gonna go towards replacing the Karma Fleet Keepstar. So get your get your bids in now. <laughs> Um, but also, guys, thank you so much for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. It's been an honor. And um, thank you to everyone, all everybody, I don't care who, what side you're on, um, for the support you've shown me and, and the things that you've done for for my family and, and myself. So I really appreciate you guys. And uh, that's it. That's all I got. Well, thank you. Well, sir. Thank you, Mine One. We you. really, we really do appreciate you coming on i mean i i believe this is is this the first that you've talked show you've been on no he's been on the meta show a couple Have, times. has he been on the meta show okay yeah, well, yeah. <laughs>
Thank you for putting up with us and our bullshit most of the night. <laughs> yep. Have a good night, mine. I hope you enjoy the Knicks. Thanks, man. I'm going to yep. try and get into it and then uh, whelp it somewhere. Yeah. I don't know about whelping it. But... <laughs> don't, don't, don't whelp those things. But now you'll be able to, you can enjoy the, uh, the super I, I did have what they one said, more. Whelp, uh, whelp away, buddy. Whelp away. I did have one more question for you, mine. And I don't know. Do you, do you care for something maybe a little bit more personal? Sure. Uh, so apparent, this was brought up to me in discord. Apparently you mentioned a while back in one of your streams that you would look at more at full-time streaming. If you got six months worth of income, the question was, is did the birthday stream put you there? Uh, no, it did. I mean, it was obviously a lot. Um, but with, uh, with the, the new house and, um, all that kinds of stuff, there is a, there's a lot of expense that goes into that. So unfortunately it's a good, huge step towards it. Um, but not quite there. Okay, thank you. Another yeah. little bit of a of a thing. So, ironically, before you go, uh, ironically, my mother walked into my room while I was watching your birthday bash, and you know, of course, <laughs> she was asking what's going on. You know, who the hell you watching? What's she doing? So, you know, I explained to her about your whole thing, and uh, she wanted to ask you, how the hell does your wife put up with the constant music at three o'clock in the morning on a Saturday? <laughs> <laughs> you want to answer that mrs mind <laughs> so um your plugs the, the, yeah, the, no sh the, this is you guys's fault you guys get me all hyped up and uh you know uh, i start getting louder and louder the night starts with the music and my mic voice at a very acceptable level and then as the night goes on um, you know, it gets louder. She, and that's one of the things that we're getting with the house is a basement, um, specifically for that reason. She's been a saint and I love her so very, very much for putting up with all my crap and being so loud. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a toll on the entire family. Uh, it is. It's, and that, that's kind of the point I made it earlier is streaming is a, is a lot of work. It's hard work. Um, I love it. It's, it's my favorite thing to do, but I'm not the only one doing it. It's it's everyone here all putting in the time, whether it's by, you know, giving up living room time because that's where I'm at um, and, and and that kind of stuff, you know. I just half assumed that you, like, fed everything through, like, a headset and, like, it was silent in your room and you were kind of <laughs> just doing your thing, but I guess not. So we, I tried that, uh, I, for a while I was using in-ear monitors and then my headphone over the in-ear monitor. Uh, the problem is that I had to crank it up so loud to hear all of it that I was then compensating with the microphone and just basically there was no music that they were hearing, but me every couple of minutes screaming, you know, hands up or get shit on or something that happened in the game or whatever, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, great thank you very much for uh for coming on again and thank you for uh for doing good. what you do you're always you welcome back dude yeah you got an open invite sir awesome i appreciate that i'll definitely i'll definitely stop back by for sure i had a lot of fun tonight yep thank you very much thanks see you, see you again mine see you saturday saturday will have be a fun. good one man see you Mike. bye chat bye, bye. And just uh, uh, just a heads up to our uh, to our faithful Imperium members. There's lots of stuff going on, so keep your eyes open for pings. Make sure you join fleets. We got plenty yes. to do now. Uh, hot off the did something uh, happen? Why did you shit going on? Oh yeah, Greg is well, huge because uh, when I have two cameras set up, uh, it gets kind of wonky with having like two people. <laughs> wow, we get like that, man. Um, this is so great. Look at me. <laughs> oh, Avon's going to come on now. Cool. Okay. Do you so, want me to have a camera? Ryak is I, coming on. I got, on. I got okay, mine fun. turned on. Give me a second. I got to. No, oh, no, Ryak, it's, uh, it's great. You're perfect. Yeah, you Don't do it see, uh, my messy bedroom. I got to fix fine. this real quick. I got to fix huh. everything on, on Greg's end. Okay. Too. Anyways, my fanny. That bed's where the magic happens, it. isn't it, Ryak? Holy Nothing crap. happens in that bed, and you know it. Um. So. The next fun that's been happening that we've been watching since Push to Talk happened is Fed Up uh, has is di disbanding. They uh, they had Fountain and Dominark. That means that you get to have your home back. Are you excited? Oh. Yeah, of course I. Yeah, am. yeah. So, I still have, I still have shit down there. 
Yeah, so they're getting the fuck out of there, which is great. Um, and then, so Fed Up is breaking up and mostly folding in to test. Brave is fucking off as far from us as they can, but they're going to do their own thing. So I think that they're dropping from test, it sounds like. And then we've got Evictus Town Hall, which was great. Did anybody else like it? Because I sure liked it. I enjoyed it. I forgot they were, I forgot they existed, so I haven't listened well, to it Well, they didn't yet. do anything before, so... It's no, a group the, over in test space or yeah, in like the, space. I was going to say so the legacy last, group. The last yeah. No, they're one of those tiny ones that does nothing. They're, well, they're bigger, but they did nothing anyways. Yeah, so. I was going to say the last thing that happened that was relevant that they did was when fucking Siapedes left to join Dread Palm. Like that's the yeah. last thing Evictus yeah, did that was much. fucking relevant. They lost their FCs and they had to go. So uh, Evictus had an hour long town hall. It was great. Uh, everybody should listen to that. It's on Reddit. It was very entertaining because. They talked about, like, I hope uh, goons should be pro- preoccupied by Brave and Tess, so they're not going to bother us for a while. So we're going to make a group uh, of us with AOM and Vindy over in Esoteria. Unbeknownst to them, you're, there's a bunch of test structures in, so in you Esoteria. you my name wrong, dude. So I, uh, we, we, I quickly done in a matter of, like, five seconds. And- it'll be fine after tonight but i've got about 30 minutes of this show left before we gotta go yeah. so i gotta keep things moving so um so evictus you are on the list verified by diplos so buckle up bite the pillow we'll be there i don't know when but since you are the closest more than likely sooner rather than later what does um, bite the pillow mean don i don't get it oh jeez. <laughs> you'll figure it out They'll probably just disband like fed up. No, they 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 might got a really all, and I try to tell other happy people this like just take it, all right, just stay where you're at. Let us blow everything up, and then when we leave, you can move back in. Like if you just make it fast, it'll be easy. <laughs> look at look at what we did. In your mouth, we'll, we'll pull the fucking trigger. Like that's the simplest fucking thing there. Like. <laughs> Lo- no, we're not going to do that, you know. I want Eve triggers in game. I want test and 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 all the other legacy alliances. Is that not the go... pussiest thing to do? Is to run to it, drone lands yeah, to avoid us? Here's, like just take on. your your shit and, t- uh, and uh, do it. No, 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 no. Here, here's the thing, though. Mif- hold on, hold up. This is actually like so. All they're doing is leaving the space open. Like, please, I'd rather if Pappy's just going to be a bunch of fucking cowards constantly. Let someone else take the space and actually create a new block so the game can be healthy again. Because everyone being fucking blue is unhealthy for the game, and it's not what this game needs. What the game needs is people to be more spread out and more blocks. We need fucking a new GOTG, a new punk. Like, we need groups like that. I've been if- playing Matchmaker well, I, um, all week. I uh, I explored... I can't remember who it was, but someone someone in Goons that I talked to on Mumble, they were on Theta Comms one day. I haven't seen them in a very long time. But we explored... Uh, a topic because my my father was in the room and we were talking about eve and you know my dad used to play eve for many 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 Uh years until he quit but either way we were talking about what it means when a big block disbands when one gets destroyed and i think now more than ever you look at what goons and what we did to tribute right we annihilated tribute in a month we totally glassed the region we fucking emptied it out within a fucking month and you look at what happened after we left tribute there were um what 40 different smaller alliances a few from low sack a a one or two from high sack a few here and there and they all went and they said hey this is a great opportunity for us to try null sack this is a great opportunity for us to kind of try and fit in and um you look at this and you see this throughout eve history right you you see yes, this that's when, what happened in tribute yeah, that's what happened in tribute. over that's what it's, happened it's happening catch and that, in past that's what's happening in, in probably happen block in it, it's what's happening in probably block right now with how a whole bunch of different groups kind of dipped their toes into it and dread bomb and wrecking crew they eventually came out and eventually one of these groups uh adapts to that null sec 
uh, meta gaming mindset and they get their their shit together basically and they right. they they become the top king and a new null sec power hour is born and it's so in my in my personal opinion it's one of the most beautiful things that can happen in this game because it starts that cycle right you don't know who wrecking crew is going to align with in two three years if another war happens, which it probably will in two to three years, because why wouldn't another war happen in EVE Online, right? Dominic, but do you have any... Seriously, uh, seriously any... Dawn, was, was Mifune just trying to explain salting the earth versus forest yeah, fires? Yeah, and, in and, and Mifune, we're going to have to talk way. about this. Yeah. You take way too long to I'm get to sorry, your point. I'm sorry, that's a fair... Okay, it's and I already runs... told you, we we have guests here. It we need to let the, the guests talk. I know, and that's why I have to cut... I don't want to be a jackass, but we, we have guests. Let the guests talk, because they're... That's why they're here. When we have slow weeks, then it's us. Um, I want to know from either a. I'm not trying to be a dick, but like I already wrote it out. It runs in my family. My dad. I know. So I will just cut you off then. The point. All right, Avon. Don't for cigarette. Or yes. Who? Well, quick answer. Who do you want to be our neighbors? Who do you want, you want to be our neighbors? Does it have if to be someone choice, in the Imperium or someone no, if, in general? If you had your choice to live in Catch, Impasse, Esoteria, that area, who would you want living there? Uh, I would want us to be geared... Well, are we restored to our pre-war strength or as we are now? As we are right now. As we are right now, I would say Pandemic Horde. I was going to say, I'm pretty Weird. sure we, we're stronger than we were pre-war like yeah. straight up uh, like, i think that if we had our full restored pre-war strength fraternity it's well, going to be the next well, big fight yeah. for the uh, next no, it's five not. no i know i'd be i'd be str i'd be straight up for a moment like we are stronger as in an alliance than we were at the start of this war if if pgl had only come in and headshot he would have done great but like no all seriousness like yeah we may have had more isk pre-war but talking from an actual strategic standpoint we are more powerful now because we just kicked the shit Del out of fucking everyone. Dell Fortress 2.0 is going oh, to know. be the strongest fucking fortress anyone in this game don't, has don't ever write checks seen. I just, we can't cash. I just really hope Test decides that after the, after they're done with drone lands, they go back to catch. I think that would be the dream if Test went to catch. Oh my goodness. Fucking oh, up. now everything's now, all fucked up. You're fucking up my <laughs> shit here. God damn it, Dominark. It'll be <laughs> fine. Yep, you'll get it. Why does Dominark look like he's in an inferno? Because he's I'm on, got. Because I'm on fire, baby. He's got the Bastion symbol above How? him. You can't see. Actually, it I'm gonna ask Dominark. The whole stream this. is fucked up now. Anyways, <laughs> I'm gonna ask Dominark this. Uh, did I lose sound? No, I can hear you, Don. I don't know if anybody else can. Can, can hear anyone you. hear Don? X, yeah. X in Twitch chat if you can hear Don. Yeah, her volume's going as the stream's going, so yeah, they can hear her. X in Twitch chat if you want Don uh, to sing Disney show tunes. Can you hear me Wait, now? We're on Twitch. Twitch. We're on Twitch. Okay. We can't Sorry, sing Sorry, I hit my cord, and then my cord's weird. So, uh, Dominic, yes. as a fellow uh, masochist when it comes to going on talk shows that have a bunch of people that all want to gang up on you and make you answer for every decision your alliance makes. Um, <laughs> how does it feel to know that we we're winning and that they have to run away after talking mad shit for months? Oh, it, it feels amazing it, the fact, to know the fact that we were correct and everything I said, I don't, I don't spend very often. I just tell the truth, which pisses them off more than anything. Right. If you oh, yeah. agree with them, Oh my God, it just drives them crazy. Uh, but, Everything we said is true. Everything's come to pass. You know, yeah. We've talked about it on TTT. Everything's come to pass. And I don't know who said it earlier, but I agree. Frat is the next one. That's going to be the next big one. That was amazing. He said, he said it, everything has come to pass. We've, to, we, <laughs> we've been talking about it. <laughs> no, straight, straight up the whole, like, Frat is, like, right now, like, Frat has a whole fuck ton of power. And they spent the whole war building up a, like, literal fortress up in Vale. And that snuff's now kicking. But, like, in all seriousness... Frat is going to be the next big thing in the game, I feel like, threat wise. It's always um, the two big boys that fight, right? The big dogs no, in the block no, gotta no, fight. It's gonna be. Well, I mean, here's the thing is like, I would rather, I'd rather see Panfam break up. I'd rather see Legacy break up. I'd rather see more. Well, there is no Legacy anymore, by the way. Whatever. Um, but like, all seriousness, I'd rather see those groups break up and form a, maybe a new block. Maybe XIX takes in some USTZ groups and we'll maybe see like, you know, the Russians branch out and recreate their old empire they used to have. Legions like that, of X-Death? 
Yeah, I do not want to fight the Morris Mahe thing again. That's that's not gonna happen. But I just I would just like to see, you know, some new groups or maybe some of the old groups that kind of got shit on in this war. You know, maybe they turn around and create a new block, and then there's more people to shoot. There's more fights happening because that's what Eve needs if Eve wants to survive long term. Not two major fucking blocks. Hell and, yeah. I think Soteria ends up being Mangos, Evictus, Dracarys, and Rage Regiment. You no, think you no, think Dracarys is gonna no, leave us? No, no, that's what I want to happen. I think oh, Mangos think... are desperate to be our friend. I yeah, but it doesn't that. matter. They didn't switch during the war, so why should no, we give them any amnesty? Because we it's don't up. like because we see one of those situations our enemy of our enemies are friends. Yeah, but Frat's oh, oh, still our enemy already. Like, I don't really see the the benefit here. Because well, Frat will attack them, and then we'll we will go to their aid. That's how it'll start. Yeah, if we really no no if, no, we'll oh, but like honorably overall, third party. I can no, accept that. Too. Oh, third fuck party. on honorable third partying doesn't exist. On shut up, there is no honorable third partying anymore. Well, I, always, I, 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 you will, we, I do we, dishonorable we third party. party. Yeah, yeah, yeah you do dishonorable third party. Yeah, it's like dishonorable it. third party. I, I, okay. I, I still feel like I need to correct you on this because even though your wishes are commendable and, and it would be nice if it was more scattered and stuff, but the problem is in EVE Online historically, and I think this is true in most bigger uh, actual world wars, when you get the big wars, it's always going to end up being two entities. You can't have this three-way uh, huge thing happening, really, and you can definitely not have more than that. More entities can have lots of interesting skirmishes, but hopefully uh, it always ends up with uh, a big bang. And this is always a sort of a duopoly situation where there's pretty much two sides this has been true in eve throughout history and it's been through in the real world as well you always get this polarity uh, like war and this is also what, what ends up being the most destructive because that's where you get this massive uh, excitement and well potential emotional hate bonus where you really want to crush your enemy uh, a cup final is what it's all about it's not about all the the, the 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 games up until that that's only for the people on the field for everyone else it's about the big cup Caleb you're right in matter of fact this before this war that uh, uh, lengthy peace we had there was because there were three factions yeah they yeah, they're, they're, they're groups well but three major ones and then if any two were to gang up you know that's what had to happen to, to fight that fight and that's what happened to us the other two ganged up basically and, and gathered everybody else up too but you know well i'd rather in like peacetime to see like maybe four to six major blocks that are like you know maybe they come together during the major wars but maybe they're all fighting their own little side wars like that's what when i joined when i started playing eve like you had you know you had the drone russians you had you know test you had gotg you had like the tenal guys you had you had all that shit they would come together for the big wars but for the smaller stuff they'd be enemies. My worry is that people are just going to come in closer and closer together. You know, you've got a lot of space that isn't populated. Populate it. Well, I, mean, I want to well, fucking you're you're, you're definitely going to see that. You're going to see a splitting of three or more ways right now because on on the flip side of this, when Delve is retaken, potentially Fountain retaken, I don't know if it's going to be... Potentially? Well, the what? first thing they said was... Daddy Shines well, is coming home. Re retaken and populated, and It'll people be have found found oh, the the, the beach clothes okay. and and all that stuff. But remember, if there's still going to be a chase of actually punishing some of the people, um, that oh, is also going to take but, a, a bit of way, time, right? On the other side of that, uh, it will be a scatter of who's who and who's going to be friendly with whom, right? I I am expecting to see a completely new map because there's so much history, and then all this recent history and that's all got to fi figure out where to settle and who's actually going to hate who and who's going to couch with who. Also, apparently we have confirmation from fraternity tonight that uh test is moving to outer passage. Outer I, passage. That was also in isn't the it, Eve world news. I believe. Isn't it oh, wait, literally so, on the opposite side of the galaxy. No, it's that's, as, wait, almost that's, as far as possible. No, I, have a, little... I, I have a little bit of a quote, a, a beautiful quote from Arya's tweet um, from Norris. As it turns out, the Imperium are not like a coalition we have fought, faced before. Their morale is unbreakable. Some nice words from Norris, I'd say. And uh, I think it's very relevant because I think that's actually why this worked out because of 
people like Mind One, people like Seriously, people that kept the morale up, the, the, the old schoolers that just kept churning for these horrible 13 months of near boredom, right? I had fun the whole time. I mean, I, uh, I mean yeah. Fun up and down. I, I, mean, think I played a lot of Pokemon. We, yeah, I was going to say a ser- serious thing for a moment, though. If Tess is really moving to Outer Ring, like... Not a ring, Outer Passage. Sorry, Outer Passage. Sorry, I mix up Rages. They're oh, literally just hi- they're they're literally hiding in the corner of the map so they can try and not get dread bombed. Like they're going as far away from NPC stations. Are they scared of Farah? Did Farah scare them that much? Did Farah and the Bastion do that much damage? That's the real question we got to be asking here. I mean, no more of they wanted to put as much distance between us and them so they can try to rebuild some stocks as many smart people we work as they there. could between us and them too. But their choice I mean, was that or low sec, really. If you think about it, that was their two choices. They had to get as far away from us or go to low sec. Where are we well, putting Brave at? I'm looking at the map here. Where do we think Brave's going to We live? need Brave to be within 15 jumps of us because we like to farm them. I think <laughs> so much fun. Oh, no, I, they're I, I, they're I good think, neighbors. I they think, are good neighbors. Let's I think Brave will try and retake Cash and fail miserably. I think Sharded the Bed is going to try like some grand strategy of retaking Catch from Wrecking Crew. They're not going to go to Catch. I think. I think no, you, you're right. They're not triple to to catch. They could go to Scalding Pass or to catch. Triple A's or Great Wildlands. Home, what, they do? what if they went to Pure Blind? That'd be interesting. They could go to Sc- uh, the be... Great Wildlands. That would be because they're talking about high sec a lot. So that's got high sec nearby. So which is easy. It's easy. easy. Well, well, they are. Yeah. I think they're going to go to low sec. Honestly, because of what Ooh. Dunk said about the whole no, we're getting like, out of politics, we're getting out of null sec. Like, I think he didn't gonna say go, getting out of null sec. Well, he's going to go get out of politics. So I think he's going to go for either like NPC, null, Providence. like staying or, or Providence. Providence. Providence, but no, no, why would they? No, here's the thing though. If they, go to, yes. right? if, they, if they go and join, what are they going to go join? Wrecking Crew? Like, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because if they if they join Wrecking Crew, that just gets them deeper into politics. Wrecking Crew is in their own, like, is starting to get on the level of their own blocks. That would just bring them deeper into politics. They could go to uh, Amamake and fight uh, no handlebars. No, they also go to Amamake and go feed Titans like Sadat did, like. I'm Here's a question. Here's a question. Yeah, things does, that, does, that really make sense. Does anyone band together and take a run at goon culture ever again? Is that does that sound yeah, like a smart in, play in, anymore? In five in, years they will. I think it might, yeah. yeah. And about no, here's the thing, is that this is something that I believe, Caleb, you can attest to that was talked about on, on Push to Talk and it was talked about a few weeks ago by Dirk, is that we are kind of due for a sov makeover in eve online like according to dirk statistically eve online is due for a sovereignty system overhaul and i feel like if sovereignty was changed in some way that people would try again because looking at the facts one of the main no i'm not going to say one of the main reasons because pappy fucked up in a number of ways but one of the final nails in the coffin for pappy was the fact that they wouldn't mathematically have a chance of taking things like the 1dq i hub and the three tech d i hub and everything because of the way that sky netting and gate camping works and all those other things they right so it. they could have they could have i'm not saying that that was the only thing that prevented them but I, that was like that was the last needle in the haystack that kind of you know, pinned them you mean to the their less, fate. No, they were risk the averse. That, that was why. Well, they. I'm just. I'm just going to answer saying, this in a in a very short way and take a page out of Pappy's book. I, right? I don't believe that. If you are, if you yeah, are expecting, if dangerous. you are expecting a soft change, you might be disappointed. I will agree with that. <laughs> nice. I think they made. They, they learned their lesson with uh, so, Fozzie Sob. Um, I don't think they'll be making any major changes for a while for that. What about I, don't think, I, I don't think they i honestly i don't think they have any idea of actually how to do it effectively and the, the ideas that they might actually have on paper i think they've looked at them and said okay that might actually be too expensive in dev hours so i i would be surprised <laughs> if they well because if you if you want to change a lot of mechanics it's so much you have to change so there's really only a few dirty and cheap solutions which i've been screaming at them for a while if soft changes needs to be 
handled cheap, you need to make it somehow sensitive to structure stuff, right? So it's basically like a structure point system. But instead of focusing on a point system and a lot of mechanics, it needs to be a revenue stream, right? Because that's something that sub owners have been screaming about forever, that they want incentive. And the only thing that could give them that in an easy design would be sovereignty-based taxation, something well, well, that is enforced. We'll get into that on Saturday, more than likely, in full, with Dirk and Soth and McLeod and all of their opinions. <laughs> well, because so. they had promised us uh, that the, the they would have uh, they they wanted to change it to be the admin hub that actually was supposed to handle things like sovereignty and ADMs and all that stuff under one structure, right? But they completely put that on the shelf, and we haven't heard about it since. I don't even think they've even talked about any new meaningful structures. So to me, it feels like they're running on the pumps, on the cheap. Also, because as we've seen, we are getting stagnation on their revenue streams. They had some nice numbers for the past 18 months with the COVID bump and all that stuff, but it looks like they're actually suffering. And if you look at things like the PCU, that's not very likely to change. And then you've got the recent uh, attempt of baiting us back with uh, free money for everyone. And uh, Oh my yeah. God. All right. Well, so, that was no. ridiculous. So Mifune has to go to bed at a at a normal time or a mm-hmm. strict hour. So we're going to go and lay night? down. Are the two, no, are all the night. fairies going to come oh. visit him because of his hair yes. now at night? Um, yes. Brisk, Brisk is going to be so, coming uh, Yeah, Brisk will be coming in shortly. But we still have one last segment that we have to do, which is the Ryan Adar- Ryak Adaria Appreciation Station. Animal Animal fact. I don't have an Adam effect. What? Oh, tonight. okay. Give me a second. We're just yeah, gonna say Avon has I'm some gonna... pretty damn good animal oh, I, facts. I on. have an, no, I have an animal fact. Actually, my oh, grandfather, God. my grandfather who's visiting um, this week, actually had a fact, and we wanted to double check with Don if it was actually true. Google's amazing. But, so okay, go I, ahead. I, I thought <laughs> it would be a little fun thing from the stream. So my grandfather visited Florida, and uh, he was told that with uh, with gators. Um, debating on the temperature of the incubation of their eggs determines the gender that is of, correct. of the gator. So yep. if a gator that is, correct is for over, all reptiles, if it's over 90 degrees Celsius, I believe, I believe Fahrenheit. it's Celsius. Fahrenheit. Is it Fahrenheit? Fahrenheit. Fahrenheit. 90, 90 Fahrenheit. Celsius would be boi- almost boiling. So. If it, 90 Fahrenheit, then it's, um, then it's a female. And then if it's under 90, it's a male. Right, that is correct. What a great so biology the, fact, uh, Mifun. Thank you. So, so depending on the temperature. So that's why their nests typically sit at an at almost exactly 90 or around that threshold. It's usually one or two degrees. So that way they get an even mix of genders. And that is true for all reptiles. How hot are your eggs, Don? <laughs> that, oh, that's geez. just weird. Anyways, final thought. 98.6? They oh, do. so we're just so. skipping over the Riot Appreciation Station. Uh, no, the Riot Station. Appreciation Station. Okay. The Riot Appreciation Station was me saying we appreciate you, but we're going to run out of Wait, time. Yeah. So we're going to start at the top and work our way down. Um, unless you want to go first, Riot. Uh, I'm, I'm tired. I need to go to sleep anyway, so let's right. wrap this up. We so love you, go buddy. First, then. Any final thoughts? Riot? Oh, you're starting with me. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Glad this war is over. Yeah. It's just beginning, man. Yeah. And it's uh, far from Dover. We're, Jesus, we're mid-war. we got lots to do. Klexos, any final thoughts? I'm just uh, ready to finish burning them out of our space. Uh, uh, Mifune, any final thoughts? Um, the fact that everyone commented on the hair, but no one commented on the fact that I shaved the goatee along. No with one the could hair. see it. It was so like, thin and no tiny. One... Oh, I just always thought your face was dirty. No, I yeah. shaved. I shaved the goatee as well. So, I'd like, no one. I was actually surprised. I thought you guys would care more about the goatee Not than you all. would the hair. Why that, would you ever that think that time. would be the case? <laughs> that one time, it was just it was just mayonnaise that was in the goatee, right? <laughs> Uh, and then we're gonna do. I don't know who GB is, so I'm gonna skip over. Uh, you don't no know GB? Doing. No. Yeah, I uh, uh, GB. Oh, Go now on. I know GB. Uh, GB, you can have your first man. and you can have your first and final thought. GB, how are you doing tonight? By the way, GB, oh, pretty good. It's been a great. It, 
I do know GB now, but I didn't recognize the name. I'm not good with names, but I know the voice. So any first and final thoughts? Uh, I I think we're going to see a a movement of players where you might see alliances disband in a new alliance form after all this is done. We already Uh, are, which is fantastic. I'm really curious how all those test war bonds are going to go. Like, if anyone wants to jump ship. You mean the five, the five, the confirmed five trillion isk in debt that the test alliance is to its line members? Yeah, you want to talk about being chained to the mast. I don't don't know about you, but like, I've had court, I didn't buy any war bonds, but I have court mates that have gotten their like fourth war bond payment by now. And it's like, they're like, it's great. Uh, okay, Dominark, final thought. Okay, okay I've got uh, thoughts. First off, thanks to everyone in the Imperium for hanging in there, keeping your heads up, having fun, kicking ass, winning. I appreciate it. I also want to say thanks to Greg and Don and Tani and Brisk and Redline, uh, Drayden. I'm going to miss some LB, Manic. All the people that do these shows, I think we have done a, a good service for our, our Imperium brothers. Um, I said you. Who? Who are you pointing at? Mafune. Mafune. I, I said I knew I was going to miss people. Damn it. Caleb. <laughs> um, Matterall and those guys too. It, it, we know that you know, they're, they're the other side. It doesn't matter. All, everyone who's participated in doing these shows, I think has done a great service for your fellow players, the ones that listen to us. I mean, I know everybody does, of course. I mean, they're dumb, but they should listen to us. But I, I, thank you. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, you guys made it that much easier for us to stay you know, pumped up and ready to go. So good job, guys. Thanks. And, and to the FCs. You guys did a great job. Caleb, final thoughts. It's slightly offensive maybe to some uh, younger ears, I don't know, and maybe to the Americans, but I'm just going to say that uh, I hope that the Imperium, and this is to all of you people that are in the Imperium, actually don't make the same flaccid mistake that uh, Pappy just did. Don't try to do tantric stuff when you don't have the skills you have to finish while you're hard so get out there and finish the job please what the fuck (laughs) (laughs) in the actual european fuck is that all about that's fantastic nice i love it (laughs) avon final thoughts um my big final thought is based off the new event and the new uh stations we're seeing it's very likely that those are closely tied to the new shooter predictions so we might be seeing some more coming out for that so stay tuned for possible news on the new shooter and wow. then greg has a has a avon you should have thoughts? mentioned the gabloons to shoot bucks oh yes that was a funny reddit post uh i will be buying at a one-for-one exchange uh Wait, all of your gabloons this? so i made a post on reddit uh, i will be buying all of your gabloons at a one-for-one exchange from gabloons to shoot bucks your shroot bucks can be redeemed with any Reddit storm director and myself included for an extra five minutes to evac your assets without fear of loss from us maniacal bees. That's what a pretty that? fucking good deal, that man. Is, that's that's great. Great. I know. Where, where that did is you get better? the shroot bucks? No, that is better. Oh, also, an addendum to that: they are not interchangeable with Stanley Nichols. Oh my oh, god, fuck, that's bullshit. dude! That's so, no, but that's so much of a Stanley. better deal than Fountain Frank bucks or like the Fountain Frank golden ticket. Like that is that is hands down one of the best deals I've seen all war. Indeed. Uh, Greg, final thoughts? Me? Holy shit. Uh, Yeah. yeah. Next week we have, and it's not the friggin' talent show yet, but I I made a a post and nobody had any interest. We have no talent in Goon Swarm, apparently. I I said that I would play with sock puppets with my feet, and apparently you didn't like that one. I've been practicing my fucking didgeridoo. I've been practicing that goddamn thing. It's someday. We've got something something very special planned for next week. Um, We're gonna do kind of... I'm, I'm I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag a little bit, Thon. Yeah, we're gonna do an, we're gonna do an award show and we're gonna have a thread up on the forums and we're gonna be taking um we're gonna be taking uh, oh, ideas category for, suggestions for categories and uh, you can nominate people for whatever category that that you want and uh, uh and, and that's about it like just we'll figure it out you guys come up with the ideas we'll have some ideas of our own we're going to rely heavily on uh, on ryak he has uh, he's known as an idea man as a, you know as well as being a, a sexual dynamo um and i'll stop there and if you're um, and I'm kidding gonna di- on that he's not 
Ryak no. is the most God. I cannot <laughs> wait for this. I'm gonna, I'm anyway. gonna do. I'm gonna do a vic, my yeah, victory yeah. dance while uh, while we're waiting for Dawn to do her final thought. So you guys can watch me do my victory dance. All right. So I want to thank everybody for coming. All of our guests that were here earlier, as well as our future guests. Uh, Greg's dancing super distracting, but you know whatever. Um, uh, I just want to say thank you to all of our Thetans out there. We have the Theta B as an emote, so hopefully we'll try to encourage you guys to use it more. But um, I've had, this year has been very tough on me emotionally because I'm not very good at dealing with insecurities and stress and Theta Thursday. And all of our audience has been a nice, stable factor throughout the war and reminding me that no matter what, we're going to be together and we're going to have fun. So I appreciate you all for being here. And um, and then, as, as Greg said, if you have any suggestions for good categories, you can message me, Mifune, Greg. You can put it on the forums and just uh, post up what you think would be a fun and, you know, exciting category or even just a, um, a nomination. And they can be fun and some can be serious. So we're going to try to keep it fun and mix it up. So uh, other than that, we are done for the night. Thank you so much for everybody coming. Thank you, especially to people like Mind One and Dominar and uh, and Klexos and, and Altera and anybody else who came on tonight. It was a great show. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it as much as we did. Uh, we got. We will see you again next week. So bye-bye, everybody. Bye. All right. Don't forget that uh, if... Uh, if- if brisk isn't here in time to press the raid button yeah. to check out rampage inks stream it is uh, brisk here do we have brisk here okay you're gonna message him anyway i guess i'll blabber on about uh also thank no. you no also get thank you to uh galaxy and sothersil and a few other people that are helping me out the trailer that you saw at the beginning of the show today is for a documentary that will be released on youtube all about uh all about this war the major events that played into it uh we're waiting a little bit for some black hand things to be declassified so that i can fill in some gaps here and there but here goes brisk uh so goodbye everybody go watch rampage inc it's a great show goodbye everybody See you. thanks for coming thanks guys